Gus, I'll start with you. What's your reaction to the slowing jobs report this morning, the wage pressures that we saw, and what this all means for the Fed? So even though we had weaker job growth than expected in August, we've still seen the economy add an average of 750,000 jobs per month over the last three months. That's a very solid number. I think there were some one-time factors that weighed on job growth in August, but I still think that the economy is expanding, that we're adding jobs at a pretty good clip. I would expect st stronger job growth through the rest of this year. Uh, and I think that the labor market overall is in good shape. Uh, there's competition for workers that helped drive that big uh, increase that we saw in average hourly earnings over the month. And I think that things, uh, despite some downside risks from the Delta variant, still look pretty solid. Nancy, would you agree with that? I know your focus on productivity gains, which Bill Lee was just uh, talking about, is you know, he's concerned they could be under threat here, uh, depending on how the economy evolves and what policymakers are likely to do. How would that affect the way you're invested? Well, we, I, I agree with Gus. I mean, I think that the average hourly earnings uh, pop is, is also somewhat uh, driven by the fact that services jobs grew at, at a zero pace. And so what we prefer to look at the employment cost index, which kind of smooths the movement between occupations and jobs. And that that number will be very important to look at as it relates to, to productivity. But with corporations having six point eight trillion dollars in cash on their balance sheets, uh, despite the, the new tax potential tax proposal, they're using it to buy back shares, but also to invest in CapEx, which will continue to drive productivity. So since April, we've been moving our portfolios to, to a greater focus on, on tech, cloud, semis, the things that are going to drive the narrative and the productivity narrative in the coming years. And you also, as I see, are putting on some hedges, let's call it, to the broader market's performance for the first time since you know, early last year before the pandemic really set in. Why is that? Well, you know, some of this is just instinct, Kelly, but but much of it is just driven by the fact that can you find cheap stocks, high quality cheap stocks? Because if you can't, that usually is an indicator uh, that the market is beginning to, to top. And then there's always the um, AAII, which is the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear um, metric. And that peaked a couple of, of um, weeks ago, and that usually uh, leads a market correction. We've been a long time without one. We've been expecting one for a while. And so we thought this was a prudent time, uh, particularly since the insurance is very cheap right now mm -hmm. with the VIX at relatively low levels. Yeah. Gus, final question, you know, with the report this morning with some mixed signals, but overall your belief that the economy is still strong and expanding, should the Fed delay the taper? Um, we were expecting that the Fed would announce in their early November meeting that they are going to start to taper in December. That doesn't change. I think you saw some FOMC participants who are pushing for a, a sooner uh, reduction in the balance sheet, but I think that we'll have a, you know, the September jobs report will come out in early October. I think that will indicate better job growth, and I think the Fed is on track if they wait until November and start to reduce those purchases in December.